This video is going to be all about Mr. Florida. Mr. Florida is 54 years old. Um, he's been on death row for almost 23 years. He never knew his mother, and his father was a convicted pedophile. He beat, raped, and tortured his children, including Mr. Florida, three of his brothers, four half-siblings, and two step-siblings, some of which took their own lives because of the abuse. He spent most of his days as a, an adolescent in a state hospital because of his father's uh, conviction and because he didn't know his mother. While in the state hospital, he was abused by people um, in the ho orderlies in the hospital um, and treated like crap, basically. Um, his most prized possession is his life. Um, as far as uh, some of his hobbies go, um, he is a poet, um, and he also does original artwork. This is one of his um, cards that he did. Um, this is also something that he drew, as well as this. Um, he definitely um, has a uh, very a lot of talent um, with his artwork and a lot of his poetry. Um, I asked him if he was ever uh, locked up with somebody that he felt was innocent and he told me that uh, there was an inmate that he was locked up with um, that died of cancer while serving time on death row and a year later DNA cleared him of the crime that he was serving for. Um, Death row inmates at this particular facility do not receive psychiatric care unless the inmates badger the hell out of the DOC with outside support. They get very, very poor health care in there as well. Um, as far as visits go, uh, no ex-felons. Uh, they're allowed visits once a week. A uh, visitor has to fill out a form and then if you get approved, you get fin fingerprinted and photographed. Women are checked to make sure they're wearing underwear, and they have to expose their breasts to make sure they're not concealing anything. Uh, his daily routine, he gets up at 5 a.m. and takes a bath in his sink and has a cup of coffee. Uh, his breakfast is between 5.30 and 6, and watches TV until count at about 8.15. Twice a week, he's allowed out in the yard for two hours. All other time, he is locked in the cell 24-7, except for seven-minute showers twice a week and the cell is seven feet by eight feet with no windows. Uh, lunch comes at noon and they have ten minutes to eat. They don't finish in ten minutes, they take whatever they haven't eaten. Same thing with dinner which comes at 5.30. Um, he's not allowed to use the phone and does not have a job. I don't know if it's because they don't offer jobs there or because he just doesn't have one. Um, he was first locked up as an adult at 21, but he was in a state hospital because of his parents until he turned 18. Now, the two things that I wanted to share with you guys the most about this particular inmate were, um, it, they definitely shook me. I asked him what the scariest experience since he's been locked up was. And instead of paraphrasing, I want to tell you exactly what he said. The scariest experience I have ever had while being incarcerated was watching a fellow inmate, I'm not going to say the name, uh, who was another death row inmate being stomped to death by at least eight guards. It was a big news issue and the guards were charged and put on trial only to be found not guilty by a jury made up of ex-cops and family members of correctional officers. The jury admit that the guards had indeed kicked this inmate to death, but since it wasn't clear who landed the fatal blow, the jury claimed it would be unfair to find any of the guards guilty. Had that been eight inmates kicking one guard to death, the jury would have found all eight inmates guilty of first-degree murder and put them on death row. It sent a clear message, though. A prison guard can abuse and even kill an inmate without fear of reprisal or legal retaliation. That's the scariest part of it all. And I also asked him... Um, you know, I'm, I'm asking all the inmates the same questions, um, and the 
I was pretty interested with his answer to the question of, you know, if the guards do things that they're not supposed to. Again, I don't want to paraphrase, I'm going to say exactly what he said. Guards do stuff against the rules all the time. They beat inmates, they steal, bring drugs into the prison. A couple of years back, in one of the prisons in mid-Florida, some officers were under investigation for bringing in drugs, booze, and using female prisoners for prostitution. When the FBI showed up, an FBI agent and a prison guard got in a shootout in the prison uh, and both shot and killed each other. A number of guards were on trial for killing a death row inmate by beating him to death, I just talked about. A little less than two years ago, the head of the Department of Corrections for Florida was found guilty of taking kickbacks from the canteen vendors. Um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, this was written to me uh, a little while ago, so this would be a couple months ago, um, an inmate who lived in the cell next to mine killed himself. The prison guards could have saved his life. Instead, they pulled his bleeding body from the cell and flopped it in the hall in between our cells on the cement floor and just let him bleed out. They left him there for 15 minutes bleeding out until someone showed up with a stretcher. He laid there moaning, Mommy, please forgive me. Please help me. The whole while, a nurse stood by only feet away from him and never once gave him first aid of any kind. And they call us the monsters. So, I know that a lot of people don't understand why I have compassion for these inmates and why I write to them. I know a lot of people believe that they are getting what they deserve and that by serving time on death row that they are being treated how they should be treated. But I'm hoping that with these videos that you will come to see that it's not just the inmates that are the quote unquote monsters. The way that they are treated in there is extremely inhumane. I don't care if it's a criminal or not, no human being deserves to be treated like that. And this particular inmate has told me that he welcomes any pen pals, so if you are interested in writing to him, please let me know. Write to me and I will give you his information. Thank you for watching.